Hello, if you've come to this video it means that you have a check injection warning light on your vehicle something like a Renault Kajara Nissan Qashqai with a 1.5 DCI engine the 1.5 DCI engine is quite a common engine and this fault that I've been having on my Renault Kajar has been around intermittently for about 18 months the long story short is I've tried to do an end-to-end -end video uh, because I've found a lot of YouTubers have helped me diagnose this fault but there wasn't a quite end-to-end -end. I now realise re-reviewing this that I've missed the part about how to get the sensor off but it's actually quite easy so if you've got a check injection fault which is a catch-all for a number of errors <coughs> If you get a, a, a an OBD2 code reader and able to read it, something like an Otel one, which I use, it will tell you that it's pressure upstream of the turbine. Uh, and I did diagnose it myself and used um, a cable, a brake cable to clear it, but it didn't work. I then put it into a garage and they charged me a lot of money to clean it and replace the sensor, but it wasn't the sensor. It's actually the pipe that's blocked. And from this video, and a lot of com car com garages were asking a lot of money to replace this, so I thought, bloody hell, I'll give it a go myself. So long story short, it's this pipe that you need to be replacing. It's 40 millimetres long, or 400 millimetres long, sorry, 40 centimetres or thereabouts. Uh, it's £130 to replace it, and um, for those trying to get it off, it's a 11 millimetre bolt, and this video will talk you a bit through the process of how I did it, and thank the other YouTubers who've inspired me to create this video. Thanks. So we've got a Nissan, a Renault Kajar, similar as a Nissan Qashqai. Got the dreaded check injection fault, put the OBD reader on it and it's a pressure upstream of turbine. I've already tried putting this cable down it which cleared it, put it in a local garage. They charged me 200 quid to do the same and then a £120 for the sensor which was absolutely not needed. Put the old sensor back on and it worked fine, so I had a bit of dispute about them for changing the sensor and charging me for it when it didn't actually clear the fault. I then decided to take it into Specialist Cars in Aberdeen, who quoted me £130 for this little pipe and um, an hour's labour. However, I went, and then I decided, well, I'll get them to do a timing belt while they're at it, it's all in the same area. However, took it in and then it's not just an hour's job, it's like a day's job. So I'm now like... At £120 an hour, £720 to replace a pipe that doesn't actually affect the performance of the car. So I took it to Aberdeen Auto Electrical for a second opinion before I'd taken it to Nissan and um, they were really good and actually what they're saying is that I might actually be able to get my hand. The, the thing about this pipe is it's an absolute bitch to get off. So what I'm thinking is if I can take some of this metal cows in here and get my hand down and rather than go from underneath the engine it might try and take away all the scuttle here and that would give me a lot of space to get my hand down the back so we'll see how that goes so i've got this metal plate off i was just three 10 mil bolts i've taped this out because i'm going to drive the car for a little bit Start. sorry catching these tissues that went away Right, so now I've got a light in there, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but actually, now that that's out the road, I can actually get my hand all the way down there. I don't know what pipe is, don't know. So you can see my finger, that's the pipe, I can get my hand onto it. So actually I might not need to take all of that off, because I've actually been able to get a spanner onto that. But it's quite stiff, so what I'm going to do is um, soak this tissue with uh, penetrant and then just leave it on it for a half an hour or so and hopefully that will soak, uh, absorb into the, the boat and it might come off and also I'm going to let the car heat up a bit, it was warm just now but not too warm um, and just be careful if you're doing this, there's a wee clip in a bit and see that clip there, it's sharp so it tears your hand so, alright I've got some nice cruise feet spanners from wrenches from Amazon um, but I'm still struggling to get in a boot the pipe down there I saw a video a guy 
managed, I've not got my light on so you can't see, but um, yeah, a guy managed to bash back a little bit the, the, the cover, it, it will let you actually see it. So in order for me to get more out of this, I'm going to take off this little bracket that was holding the bracket to hold the sensor on, so that is a 8mm spanner, just to get that wee bad boy off of there. That, and then I'll take the other nut off there, get that out of the road, and then I'll be able to get clear down there. That wee 8 mm bolt was harder to get out than expected just because that sensor's here. The next one's back. The next one's back here. That's a 13 mm I'm just going to put a socket on it, get it out from the top, and then that'll get this bracket out the road. We've had a bit of success. I've actually left this for a few days because I'm fed up. I was driving it without the sensor attached, and when you drive it without the sensor attached, all you get is a check pollution fault. And um, yeah, my cruise control works. Taped that up just now. But what I've done is I've got my wee light. You can actually see the bolt now. So if you see that metal bit in there, what I did was I put the back end of that wrench and levered the, the tray away. So now I can actually see the bolt from the top of the engine. I had to take some of this away. I think it was a 10 or 13 mil bolt. Uh, just hanging there. But um, yeah, we're a step closer. I've put some uh, WD-40 penetrant on it. Um, yeah, but I'd like to try and bend that metal bit back just a bit more. So I've got a wee bit more access because what's happening is that that metal heat tray, which I don't know does too much, I can't actually get my crow's fruit spanner on it now, so get in there. Okay, after much heroic moving about, I have now got it out, unbroken. Engine was warm. Every single turn was a battle. Oh, sorry, I don't know if you can see that. Every single turn of the thread is a battle. It's now out. But what no YouTube I've come across before is that that's bloody stuck in. I think I'm going to have to take this metal bracket out because I can't get it up and I can't get it down. And after all of that hard work of getting it out without breaking it, I don't want to damage it. So I think this bad boy is going to hate to come off. I don't know what size a sport belt is, but hey ho. So, I did manage to get this pipe out eventually from the engine, pushed it down the way. The wee rubber bit on the top was causing a bit of a problem. But despite getting it out, I cannot clean it. It's still totally blocked. And where I can see it's blocked is around about this corner here for some reason. I don't know why when it's the least bend, but, you know, it's an absolute bugger of a design. Um, so, thanks to Sandy Anderson's video, um, putting some acetone down it which is nail varnish cleaner and heating it up uh, what I initially used was an electric hot air gun but it just was not getting it hot enough I have passed away my brazier for welding pipes to somebody back to my dad so the next best thing is a gas camping stove um, and I've actually seen fumes and stuff coming out of this when I was heating up so I've already done this once and actually although I haven't managed to bro break through I have seen carbon dropping out the end of the pipe as I've been waggling my brake wire through it so I'm going to give it another go and just keep repeating that until I break through but I'm going to stop and re-record once I've got the stove going hopefully I'll catch you'll be able to see some of the fumes and stuff coming out of this when, uh, when it's going Is that because I was trying to save this pipe because I'd paid for a sensor I didn't need uh, to clean it um, I took my effort getting it out but as some of the other youtubers have said you can act, you might actually be able to cut that from above the engine I don't know how easy it would be to cut that cut it there you'd be able to get a 11mm socket 
straight on it and then that might help you get it out if you're worried about breaking it but um, yeah given it's 130 euros and there is the possibility of cleaning it I was unsuccessful you might be better um, yeah have a go all right I've bitten the bullet I've been all morning trying to burn out the bloody carbon and I've been getting absolutely nowhere I've given up um, absolutely shocking uh, for that part 130 pounds i tried a few independents and absolutely shocking so that's the part number there um yeah and what i'll do is i'll put a bit of wire through it and measure the length for those that i've seen in other videos asking how long how much they need to poke through and we'll see so putting running that bit of copper through the new one which wasn't easy actually considering it's brand new and absolutely squeaky clean it's not kicking the arse off of 40 centimetres. There's a bolt on the end. Question is, copper slip or not to copper slip? I think I'll be sticking a wee bit of copper slip on there just to help it out in the future. I hope that I'll have got rid of the car. So if that one lasted 6 years and 60,000 miles, although it was coming on last year intermittently, but what I think I'll do with this one is that every year, as part of the annual service, I will... Um, Got a bit of cleaner doing it, acetone possibly. Um, let it sit and burn off. Um, so yeah, and also one thing to note: a new one doesn't come with a little circlip for the the sensor. So just a case of getting that back on. That's going to be difficult, but hey ho, the hard bit's done. Just going back, I've actually put this all back together again, and um, been driving it for a week and I've had no problems. Everything's tickety boo really chuffed with how it worked out um, one piece that I forgot to show people was actually taking the sensor off I've had that sensor off so many times to clean it that I can do it with my eyes closed and I've probably just wasted so much time if this happens again I'll just go straight into it um, you can if you see there there's a wee circle up there you squeeze that slide it down the rubber bit that releases the tension and then there's another wee circle up here you pull that out and then that can come that comes free Put a screwdriver in the back of there, release that, sensor pops out. And that's you. So in my haste to get the car running again, I didn't video how to put it back together, but if you manage to get it out, you'll have uh, managed to put it back in again. Putting it back in was much easier. You know, when I was taking it out, I couldn't get my hand on there to unscrew it. Um, but on the way in, it, it burled in easy, and uh, just because it's awkward, I didn't put copper slip on it, uh, but I did squirt a bit of 3-in-1 um, oil and then screwed it in and got as, hand, as tight as I could. Uh, I think, yeah, it was near, it was pretty, pretty closely in. Uh, but yeah, just to recap, the reason why I was trying so desperately to get this out without damaging it was... Um, because I'd already been fleeced by the local garage for two or three hours labour and a sensor I didn't need. So that's one bit I've missed from a video. I'll probably go back and redo that and add it into the video. But yeah, this 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 is the sensor that a lot of garages, though, they tried to clean it, charged me two hours labour for cleaning it, but didn't because it was still blocked. Then £120 for a sensor, which absolutely wasn't necessary and the sensor just sits in there that that comes off the back of the manifold and that sensor measures the the pressure coming off of the the engine but of course once it gets blocked it doesn't work so replacing the pipe like uh, jim said jim's shed said is probably the only best answer i tried the bike wire and my advice is just don't waste your time you'll spend two three hours mucking about trying to do that when i reckon it's a two three hour job for like now that i've hopefully i've given you all of the information you need you can just smash straight into it make sure the engine's warm wd-40 two to three hour job to get this out unfortunately it's no longer 30 euro it's uh, 130 pounds for this pipe which is just ridiculous i looked online there's a lot of european um car park places do still list it for 26 30 euro but they're all out of stock and renault are now charging 130 pound for this so um yeah don't don't subscribe because i don't do very many videos but um if you found it useful please like i'm by no means an expert um i'm a, ha a pretty decent diy guy so uh, if you do put comments i'll do my best to answer them as and when i see them but um yeah have a go save yourself thousands of pounds because this they were saying this is going to take seven or eight hours an engine out job to do it all and a lot of fucking bullshit excuse my language a lot of bullshit all right Best of luck.